how to get the blessings from God. So with your hands and lifted, you say, God, I'll give you everything you need. I'll give you my best praise. I'll give you my best worship. You deserve it. You deserve it. You deserve it. And there's nobody like you. Nobody like you in all of the earth. We magnify you. We glorify you. We just turn to somebody and say, my worship got me through. Come on, come on, say, my worship got me through. Yeah, it wasn't my child, but it was my worship. It wasn't the church I went to, but it was my worship. It wasn't my name, but it was my worship. And if any man be a worshiper of God, him, the Lord, hear him. So, Father, we bless you tonight. Will you clap your hands for the Lord right there where you are? Come on. I said, clap your hands for the Lord. We thank you for that now. It's such an honor to be here tonight. So good to see everybody. Amen. You may have to see the Lord's in the Lord's house tonight if you can. We're getting ready to receive offering and to re begin to sow into God's kingdom. And it's a good place to sow into God's kingdom when you are worshiping God. How many are happy to be in the house tonight? Don't come on, come on, y'all not acting like you're acting like you're tired. But if you made it out on Friday, I need you to clap if you're happy to be in the house tonight. You could have been anywhere on Friday night, but the Lord allowed you to come here. Can we give a great God bless you to these singers that have ushered us into God's presence? Come on. Can we give God praise for them? We've asked you all week, we've asked you for the last two nights to sow sacrificially. We've asked you to sow seed. Amen. And we thank God for those who have been obedient to God's word. One thing I don't want you to get used to is that you don't pay God. You are sowing into God's kingdom. One of the things that come with revival is that you are have an opportunity to sow. Instead of you looking at it as I gotta, I gotta give an offering all three nights, I want you to look at it like this: that God has blessed me so much that I can't give every night. Instead of looking at it as a burden, look at it as a blessing. God has given you the ability. A couple of years ago, you couldn't do this, but look where He brought you from. I thought I was in church. A couple of years ago, this would have been a struggle. But look where he brought you from. A couple of years ago, you would have thought about this, but look where. So tonight, I'm going to ask you to continue to sow into God's kingdom. This is, we don't, we don't, we, we're not getting this to, to pay anything. The bills are already paid, but this is an opportunity for us to sow into his kingdom and outpour seed tonight. Our poor seed as we begin to sow into this revival. New Bethel, any of our people that have been here with us, how have been enjoying the last two nights? Amen. The last two nights have been amazing. Amen. The man of God preached to us and he let us know uh, that we are here, that we are here talking about the ten lepers. Last night we talked about, amen, how that, uh, that subtraction equals to elevation. When God is elevating you, he will begin to subtract things from you. And so tonight we are expecting another high time from Pastor Wallace, amen, as he takes us a little higher in God. Listen, our deacons are coming to receive our offering tonight. If you are giving online, newbethelmbchurch.com, amen, you can give online through Cash App, amen, dollar sign, New Bethel MB Church, amen. And in the memo section, I want you to put these two words, outpour seed. Out poor seed. We are trusting God and we are standing on his word. There are no hundred dollar lines here. There's no fifty dollar lines. Amen. Whatever you want to give, you give unto God. But God loves a cheerful giver. So as you're giving, I put a smile on your face. Come on. Let me see your teeth like you were getting a car. Hallelujah. Some teeth, no teeth, all your teeth. Just smile to God because he is a good God. Any first time visitors in this is your first time at our church. Any first time visitors? Amen. God bless you. Let's just celebrate her. Amen. Even online. You are, if you are so in here for the first time, we greet you in the all sufficient name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Our deacons are coming. Amen. And we're going to begin to hold our seats up into the air. We're going to ask God's blessing. Let's pray for right now. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, I thank you. And I bless you and glorify you. For you are a great and mighty God. I thank you that, God, you're causing all grace 
to abound towards us that we have all sufficiency and we want nothing. Father, I thank you that you are rebuking the devourer for our sake and that, Father, you are causing God the blessings to flow into our finances. Thank you that, God, every seed being sown tonight, it now applies to the kingdom principle that as long as the earth remains, there'll be a seed time and there'll be a harvest time. So, Father, I thank you right now for every person given by faith that they shall receive. Thank you that our second floor is fully furnished and fully operational and paid off. Thank you that our education wing is debt free and fully paid off in the mighty name of Jesus. And I thank you and I glorify you in Jesus' name. All of God's people said, Amen. Amen. You are in the hands of our ushers as they direct you. Amen.
I just want to highlight verse 34 in the hearing for the sake of our reading. Reading from the, this is the New King James Version. Our translations may be different, but rest assured this evening that the context remains the same. If you haven't responded by saying amen, amen. you're still looking sharp and hold up. Mark chapter 5, verse 34 reads, And he said to her, Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace and be healed from your affliction. This is the word of God. It is the truth. The grass withered. The flowers fade to away, but the word of our God shall stand eternal. For God's word is true. And his word can be trusted. Yes. You all may be seated. Thank you. Subject, topic, a theme that is asked to share tonight. I want to preach from this thematic thought. And that is when the untouchable becomes touched. When the untouchable becomes, becomes touch. Brothers and sisters, permit me to commence this preaching proclamation by taking a moment to journey and reflect back a few years past of the commencement of COVID-19. You and I remember COVID-19. COVID-19 started around 2019. And some folks suggest it came from China. COVID-19 has been very devastating for the American people because it caused loved ones to drop dead. Caused us as a people to be socially segregated cause for people, a world, a whole community to be isolated from family members and friends, not being able to visit loved ones and nursing homes, not being able to hug your mother, not being able to hug your father. COVID-19 interrupted the reality of our life, didn't it? Yes, sir. Causing us to be segregated separated. Right. COVID-19 was very, 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 very interesting and I think there are a few of you who can rest assured this evening that maybe your testimony is I survived COVID-19 because I had the boosters and the vaccination. <laughs> uh, but permit me to park here parenthetically and submit this to you tonight. You're not assembled in this sacred space tonight because of you having the vaccination and your booster shots. You and I are assembled in this sacred space under one yeah. under one thing, and that is the very fact that God's power has been made manifested in our lives. Yeah. You and I are assembled here today because God has shown himself to be a keeper. God, God has shown himself to be a deliverer. God has shown himself to be one who will sustain you in the midst of ailments, illnesses, and afflictions. Amen. Who am I talking to tonight? You can holler back at me. You can testify, preaching you all in my business. And then I'm here today because God has kept me. I heard a preacher say, if I told y'all how to get a million dollars, how to play your pick four, pick three, and I told you the numbers that was on your scratch off was going to allow you to win a million dollars, y'all would be shouting all around the streets. But I just got done telling you that you and I are still here in this place today. On the one reason, that's because God has kept us. Who am I talking to? Who can holler my give you can testify? I'm grateful that I serve a God who's been keeping me. He has, he has been keeping, 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 keeping us, keeping us. That is the imagery, brothers and sisters, of Mark chapter 5. It's quite interesting. This is the depiction of quite the imagery of what, what it looks like to be segregated, what it looks like to be socially outcast, what it, what it looks like to be marginalized. 
it's what it looks like to be to, to be away from, from, from a community of people. Look at the imagery of the passage, brothers and sisters. It is Mark chapter 5 and introduces to us, brothers and sisters, uh, of, of several different miracles wrapped in one book. Yeah. Oh. Chapter 5 starts with the demoniac in verse 1, man who cuts on himself. He is filled with demons. Chapter 2, brothers and sisters, we see Jesus Christ having authority and power over sickness. And he, he has the authority to forgive those who've been afflicted. Come on. Chapter 3, we see that, that, that Jesus Christ has power to heal on the side. Right. Chapter 4, we see that, that Jesus has power uh, not, only, not only over sicknesses and not only uh, over demons, but, but chapter 3 uh, and chapter 4 shows us that God and Jesus have authority and power over nature. Uh, chapter 4 tells us to teach you and I, the disciples and Jesus are in the midst of a storm, man. And they had caught up in the Bible, so that suggests to you and I that the water is in the boat and Jesus is sleeping in the boat. The disciples get all irritated, discombobulated due to this catastrophic storm. And they say, Master, do not, do not care that we should perish with the storm. And Jesus, who is asleep and gets up, wipes the sleep out of his And he said, Peace, be still. What's interesting for me, brothers and sisters, is that Jesus speaks to something that does not even have the capacity to hear. It does not have ears. The, the sea don't have ears yet. The sea obey his voice. Talk about a sovereign sufficiency that even nature itself must subject itself to God's voice. Jesus says, Peace be still. And now, chapter 5, we see that Jesus is on his way to Jairus' house. And some scholars really suggest that this here is a sandwich miracle. It's a sandwich miracle, scholars suggest, because while Jesus is on his way to heal Jairus' daughter, there are be a divine interruption. Uh, divine interruption. Pay close attention to the verbiage of this passage, brothers and sisters. Verse, for verse 25 says, Now a certain woman who had a blood flow for 12 long years and suffered many things, many positions. She spent all she had and, and it didn't get better, but it grew worse. Could you imagine? The heart, the agony, the anguish of this woman who, who has been socially outcast. She's been segregated. She, she cannot be in proximity of other normal people. You do know according to the medical laws of Leviticus chapter 15 to be exact. And when you are being defiled, when you have been considered outcast, you are not permitted amongst normal people. In fact, when you have been deemed and de 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 deemed and doomed, that's unclean. In order for you to come into proximity, you must be six feet away and you must shout out, unclean, unclean. This woman here has been, been defiled and socially segregated for, 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 for 12 long years. Could you, could you imagine 12 long years of bleeding, 12 long years of a mission of cycle, 12 long years of anguish, 12 long years of defilement, 12 long years of pain. One moment she thinks, and she tends to believe that she has master her pain and out of nowhere. Pain slaps her right in the face. Have you been there, brothers and sisters? When you have tended to, 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 to have control over your pain, control over your issue, and out of nowhere, it hits you right in the face. You can sit there all saying the moon is tonight as if that's not your reality, but there are a few of us who can rest and be assured tonight and can testify preaching you talking to me because there's sometimes I try to master my problem and my problem hit me right in the face. Turn me on me and she wrestles with the reality and the anguish of her bleeding. It's an internal issue that's causing external problems and permit me to say wherever there is internal issues, Inevitably, you will have an external experience and that will show to you and it will express to you and now uh, uh, an external uh, uh, act. And you, you try to match your suppression in depression too long. You're going to find yourself pacing the floor. You, 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 you try to yeah, yeah, deal with the grief internally too long. You, inevitably, it's going to come out of you. That's the reality of this passage, brothers and sisters. She's dealing with internal issues. And it's, and, it's, and it's come out of her externally. The imagery, brothers and sisters, could you take a moment and see? A woman who 12 years prior to this was normal. But now she, she's bent over.
You wanted to get to Jesus. I came to tell you, get to Jesus. Yeah, yeah. yeah. When we in your body, get to Jesus. Yeah. Don't got a dime in your pocket, get to Jesus. <laughs> Don't know how you're going to pay your kids to wishes or even your mortgage. I came to tell you, get to Jesus. Yeah, get to. Get to. Somebody shout, get to Jesus. Get to. Get to. He get to Jesus when she heard about him. She said, she came from behind and touched him. By any means necessary. I like verse 28, brothers and sisters. She says, for she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be, be, be made whole. She, she says, if I may touch his clothes, I, I, I will be, be, be made whole. This is quite interesting because some people really tell you, yeah, you ought not talk to yourself. Yeah, but I kind of beg to get it. Sometimes I gotta talk to myself to keep me from doing some stuff to some people. Have you ever been that brother and sister? You ever, have you ever, you ever told yourself, maybe just turn it to you? Maybe just go the other way. But because had you not done that, you would have reacted in a way you really did not or should not have reacted. This woman that talks to herself. She, she has conversation with herself and says, if I can just touch, not, not you, but he's healed. If I, if, I, if I can just touch what's connected to him, I believe that I will be, be made whole. Now, I don't know who I'm talking to tonight, but that's a word for you and I. We want to have that same faith tonight to say, if I can just touch his ear, I believe he'll open doors. If I just touch his ear, I believe he'll make ways. If I just touch his ear, I, I'm a witness that, yeah, he can do. But no other power. Can, 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 can do. For she said, if I may touch his clothes, I shall be made. Oh, it's interesting, brother. This is verse 29. I'm almost there. The text says immediately. Somebody shout immediately. Immediately. It's interesting because when you look at the word straightway and immediately, it's found several different times mm -hmm. in the gospel of Mark. It, it literally gives the imagery, if you read, of Jesus being on the move. Right. Mark's gospel is so unique, brothers, is because it always shows Jesus as one who shows up and he shows out. So several different times it says straightway and immediately. I like it. Somebody shout immediately. 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 Not, 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 not later on. Not, not, not several days later. Not, not years later. But the text says right then and that immediately her blood flow dried up and she felt in her body that she was healed and her affliction has, yeah, she was healed of her affliction. Jesus, somebody shout immediately. And Jesus immediately knowing in himself that power had come out of him, turned to the crowd and said, who, who touched me? Could you imagine, Jesus, all of these individuals surrounded around you? Could you imagine how you're going to have the different audacity to ask us, who touched me? Could you see the narcissistic and arrogance of the disciples who's caught up with the great agenda of Jesus Christ. Could you see them getting excited because Jesus' miracles is taking place? He said, man, don't you start your mess with us today and ask us who touched us. Jesus said, no, nah, oh boy, shut up. Somebody touched me. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I didn't say somebody washed up against me, but somebody touched me. Remember me to park here parenthetically and say this, you want to know what? A lot of us come to church. A lot of us come to this sacred space. And you know what we do? We bust up against God. We, we just get just around minimum and enough. But God said, I ain't looking for nobody to bust up and to me. I'm looking at some folk to touch me. Who am I talking to? Who can holler back at me and say, I pay to touch God. I need you to touch my life. Jesus said, I ain't asking who brushed up against me. I know there are a lot of folk around me, but there was somebody who needed me. There was somebody who was very intentional with their touch. And I wonder, is there anybody here who came to be intentional with your touch tonight? I know we've been in revival with y'all. to pull your hands up and you all tell God, God, I need you by any means necessary. God, I need you to touch my family. God, I need you to touch my family. God, I need you. Touch me. It's interesting, brothers and sisters, because as this woman touched Jesus, in other words, Jesus, according to the Levitical law, Jesus should be deemed as unclean. This is interesting because this woman touches Jesus. She, she's been bleeding, she has been defiled. She is, she's been in sin and she cannot touch him, but yet she reaches out and touches Jesus. She 
when the untouchable mm. becomes the becomes touch. When the untouchable be, be, becomes becomes touched, then yeah. and it's interesting because the disciples and Pharisees and scribes probably probably didn't want him to, to be touched because they thought that Jesus would be defiled as unclean. But really, I suspect tonight they really did not know who he really was. That's it. That's it. They, they really did not know that Jesus had complete authority and power. Notice what, what he said. They looked around to see who had done this. There's this woman bent over within her body, feeble. No, no, no means of strength comes to him and, and tells him the truth. The text says, but the woman fearing and trembling, knowing what had happened, came down and fell down before him and told him the, told him the truth. I like the language of the text. The New King James Version says, she fell down and told him the truth. This, in other words, is a posture of worship. She literally falls down and, and tells him, tells him, tells him the truth. And, and you and I ought to be falling down tonight to tell God the whole truth about like this woman exemplifies what it means to have true, authentic worship. She fell down and, and told him the, the truth. And he said to her, here's why I want to hang out at verse number 34. If I was at Faith Berkeley, I'd say, you ain't shot about now. You ain't going to shot. I like verse 34, brothers and sisters. The text says, and he said to her, daughter, yeah. your faith has made you well, go in peace and be healed from your affliction. Don't rush through the passage too soon. Yeah. Notice the language and the imagery that Jesus used. He could have said, sister girl, yeah. your faith has made you. He could have said, baby, your faith has, has made you whole. But he says, talk. I like the language of the text. Because now Jesus looks at the catastrophic, crucial experience of this woman. And, and, and he now allows her to be brought in as his family. I like that. Thank you, Dr. Man. Now Jesus said, I, I know where you've been. I know you've been separated. I know you've been marginalized. I know you've been deemed outcast. I know you've been away. But I'm going to make all this simple of you now. Daughter, your faith has made you whole. I don't call a lot of people daughter, but my daughter. At least I call her daughter. Why? Because she's mine. She, she belongs to me. I'm sure y'all ain't gonna call nobody else just daughter and son of you. But yeah, you do call them that knowing that they are part of your family in Jesus. Hallelujah. Yeah, he knows our past. He knows our pray. But aren't you grateful tonight that he still calls you daughter? Yeah. Aren't you grateful tonight he still calls you son? Daughter. Yeah. Your faith has made you, made you, made you well. Your faith yeah. has made you made your will. It wasn't faith that made a will. It was the object of her faith that made her will. Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. You can have faith in anything, but what made her heal is the fact she had faith in the object. Who was the object? The object was Jesus. She had faith in, 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 in Jesus. Your faith has made you well. I, I was on my way here. I'm through, really. I'm going to close the book. And I was telling Murphy, I said, I was preaching the passage a lot of times. Mm -hmm. But what's interesting to me, brothers and sisters, is the language that Jesus said. He says, your faith has made you well. That's what my translation said. Yeah. But there are some translations, your translation may say, your faith has made you whole. Yeah. No, notice the text does not say your faith has healed you. Because you do know that healing could be temporary. Yeah. Because you know Lazarus was healed temporarily. But we do know that he's nowhere to be found out, right? Because he died all over, right? Yeah. But when you obey made whole, your wholeness is eternal. I was, yeah. But because what Jesus is suggesting in the context of this passage, he said, baby, I know you've been an outcast. I know you've been a Gentile. I know you've been deemed as unclean. Nobody wants to be around you. But baby, you are part of my family. He said, your faith has made you whole. Look at the, the word whole. The word whole literally means, when you do the study of that in the Greek, it literally means your faith has saved you. You are now.
out. Saved is a salvific expression. I like it because catch this. If you ain't shouting about now, and you remember that I said, the shout of the text is not only did Jesus heal her from her affliction, but he also saved her. Good night, may the Lord bless you real good. All I came to tell you tonight is that can't nobody do you like Jesus. And there can't nobody do you like the Lord. And so if you're not too mean, you ought to look at your neighbor tonight. And you ought to say, neighbor, I'm a living witness on what the Lord can do. He'll pick you up and he'll turn you around. And he'll place your feet on the solid ground. Is there anybody here who can praise him? You ought to look back over your life and you ought to test it.
Listen to me, this is not a traditional church. We don't believe that if you got saved at nine and you live a hellish life, you're still saved. No, you got to repent. You must be born again. Lord, come into my life. That's what's got to happen tonight. If you have been saved, but maybe you backslid, there's something called rededication. That's where you recommit your life back to Jesus. Maybe that's you tonight. There's somebody who's going to pray with you. Maybe you're saved, but you don't have a church. You just, you just kind of visit. I want to accept you tonight and say, come to the kingdom. Give me your hand, but give God your heart. I'm begging you, if you die tonight, think about this. If you die tonight, would you go to heaven? That's the question. The only way you can make it into heaven is to come through Jesus. He said, I am the door. I am the way. I am the truth. I am the light. No man comes to the Father but by me. If that's you tonight, come on, come on, come on. You say, Pastor, I'm saved. I got a church. But I just need prayer. I need somebody to pray with me. I want to receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost. With the evidence of speaking to God, I want to just get prayer. If you just need prayer, I want you to come down. Come on, I just need prayer tonight. Come on. If that's you, come on. I just need prayer. There's plenty of people to pray with you. Come on, that's you. Come on.
touched her body. Can I propose to you as we're getting ready to leave that no matter how much you hear a text, no matter how much you hear about Calvary, no, much, no matter how many times you hear or hear that he died, don't take it for granted. Why not? Listen to what I just said. No matter how many times you hear it, you could not hear it. And then you would wish you could hear the preacher say he died. You wish you could hear Mark 5. See, some of y'all catching it, but some of y'all ain't catching it. Some of y'all catching it, I don't know. You could not hear. But the fact that you can hear it said over and over again, that's reason enough to wave your hands that he died. You know, nobody appreciates walking until they can't walk. Nobody appreciates that husband until he's gone. Nobody appreciates that wife until she's gone. Nobody appreciates that preacher until they're gone. So every time you hear Calvary, you should say, I can hear it. Every time you hear Mark 5, I can hear it. And I should thank him that he died, but that he got up. I was blessed all three nights. I was blessed. The Lord blessed me. The Lord bless me. Tomorrow, tomorrow, New Bethel and the community, all those that are online and in the sanctuary, we have our fall festival trunk or treat. You know, we say the sanctify, so we don't go trick or treat, right? We, we trunk or treat, if you will. Hallelujah. Uh, tomorrow at 12, from about 12 to 3, trunk or treat, uh, petting zoo, face painting, right here on the campus. So come out, 12 o'clock, there'll be some food, praise God. All that good stuff. But then at 3 o'clock, everybody say 3 o'clock. We're going to have gospel fest. Amen. There are going to be artists, DJs across the, across the way in the parking lot. So come out tomorrow and we're going to end revival week at our gospel fest. Trunk or treat. Can we make some noise? New Bethel, that we'll be doing all this tomorrow. Now listen, it's been three, four great nights. Amen. Of preaching. Amen. We're going to end it tomorrow. Don't forget about Sunday. The Lord delay is coming. We're going to be here. Amen. Worshiping God. Can we give a great God bless you to Paul Pitts? Amen. And this great ensemble of singers. Paul is one of our members, but amen. He, he brought his group with him to come sing. Come on, do better than that. Let's praise God with him. And this great band that God bless us with. Amen. Pastor Wiggins, you've already been acknowledged, but thank God for you coming and being with us. Amen. I was waiting for Pastor Michael to come back out, but he may not come out, so I'm going to give the benediction. Can we stand to our feet? Ask God's blessing on us tonight. 12 o'clock tomorrow, 3 o'clock Gospel Fest. I want to honor our church mothers that have been here all three nights for revival. Hallelujah. Amen. It's a new Bethel, great job, amen, for being here. Let's come into agreement if we can. Let's come into agreement with God's word uh, from Numbers chapter 6, amen. We, we like to speak a blessing over you. The Lord spake unto Moses and said unto them, speak unto Aaron and to his son, saying, this wise you shall bless the children of Israel. This is what you're going to say unto them, that the Lord bless thee, the Lord keep thee, the Lord make his face to shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. They shall put my name upon the children of Israel, and I will bless them. Now may the sweet communion of the Holy Ghost, may it rest, rule, and abide. Be with you hence now and forevermore. I speak a blessing over your life that cannot be reversed, for it is a blessing that comes only from the Lord. But I say unto one, I say unto all, watch and pray until we meet again. Have a great evening. God bless you. We will see you tomorrow at noon. Be blessed.